Welcome to TYT Sports, Jason Rubin, Francis Maxwell with you. Francis, rarely do I get this excited to talk about these three specific stories. Yeah. Okay, uh, LeBron, Ronaldo, you know, the usual suspects when it comes to the Friday show. Uh, and even some Trump. I mean, the the Trump. technically three very athletic, talented, just winners. groundbreaking winners, you know? Winners. Winning like no other. The three of them. The winningest. The, 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 the most winningest of men. And handsome, three of them. The best looking winningest men of all time. Yes, I think With so. great hair, all three of them. I think our video just got retweeted at this moment with those comments. Oh, God, I would love that, please, <laughs> sir. Why am I calling you? What? Sir? You sell out. He's in the White House working. You sell out. He's working in the White House. <laughs> that was the actual thing I saw this, this last week was Trump working in White House all weekend. And then Trump. some guy following him around with the Snapchat well, <laughs> in his cop course. President doing his job? <laughs> yeah, but it's funny because that comment came with someone who was literally following him around his own golf club, like taking pictures of him, oh, like, oh, he's not working really. And he's like, oh, yeah, he's just stopping by with his golf shoes on. <laughs> I can't blame the guy. I'd be, if I had the opportunity to golf like every weekend, I'd do it too. I'd try to and do it. And don't lie. Most, <laughs> most people would. All right, uh, LeBron first. It does not matter what seed the Cavaliers have. Uh, uh, Colin Coward said this, so I'm not the first to mark it about it. Yeah, I thought about this. Uh, I think this is something, and we're going to show you the standings first, and then we'll go to LeBron's past seeds. So uh, Boston currently holds the one seed. Yeah. And based on how everything's going, it's only one game. I wouldn't be surprised if they hold on to the one seed. Now, why this is kind of unimportant to the Cavaliers, yet majorly important to the Celtics is, for one, uh, the Pacers or the Heat, I don't think pose too much of a challenge, but in the second round, you don't really want to face, uh, I'm sorry, the Celtics would face the Raptors over the Wizards, yeah. the teams that are going to home court. It all kind of breaks down into those top four being uber competitive. Mm -hmm. Look, the Cavaliers are the Cavaliers. Um, LeBron, yeah, what a wonderful analysis there. LeBron is an April, May, June basketball player. Uh, he is a, a playoffs guy. His season begins then. It's also not the first time. Francis, this is important for the Celtics, though. It's yeah. going court through the playoffs for them. I think it's also a big morale boost. Yeah, it, I mean, it, when I looked at the headlines, the first thing that I responded was, oh, that's cool. And then I checked the standings. I was like, oh, wait, the Cavs still have a game. Like, so in, in football terms, when I'm looking at things like that, it's called a game in hand. So... I'm like, well, that doesn't, like, why are you celebrating a team that's ahead when another team can just win and first catch them? Time. It's like the first yeah, time. Yeah, I get it. Like so that's, so once 140 I. 140-something days. So once I started to research, yeah. as I was just going to reference, is that they're now in uh, the sole position of best record in the Eastern Conference this late into the season for their first time since the end of 2007, 2008. What happened so, in 2007, 2008? Uh, mm -hmm. They weren't bad. Um, <laughs> Doc Rivers bad. is still holding on to it, I think. Um, what, it's, it's not Paul's fault. Um, what I will say to this is yes, it, it, regardless of the seeding, I think the Eastern Conference is so set up in a way that uh, you're going to have to face someone, of course, who is directly competitive with you. But at the beginning uh, point of the playoffs, I'm pretty confident that it's going to be uh, a wash with the top two four. to three teams, yeah. top three, four maybe, yeah, who's just going to, uh, I think there's such a big gap between uh, the top four in Eastern Conference and those teams that are pushing for playoff spots yes, at the bottom. I agree. Um, I think it could easily change hands, and I think by this point, um, it's already been obvious that these teams are superior. I think it's, I made the point in the last clip, I think that the, the West is a little bit closer uh, in terms of overall um, from one through eight compar and comparatively to the East, which has been different because the Cavs were usually so far ahead of everyone else. It was the Cavs, and then everyone was kind of uh, down below. And I don't think that the Cavs are going to, have an upset. I still fancy them to go on and win it. Um, but I think that it's it's good for the conference that the Celtics are above them. It's good that there's a mix up um, when to, who's taking the, the one seed. But again, it's not going to matter when it comes down to who they need to face because it's going to be just a fast track towards the Eastern Conference Finals regardless. They're gonna have, the bigger games are going to come um, with the last two, three games. I agree with you. I think it's going to, I think there's going to be, I mean, look, I think last year and the year before, there was not necessarily the most explosive playoffs. Um, the finals were unbelievable the yeah. last two years. Because uh, two years ago, you get, you get solo LeBron winning two games and the Warriors still coming away with the championship, which I think people have forgotten already that they've won a title <laughs> two years ago. And they're like, oh, oh shit, right. 
they do have a title. Yeah. They do know how to win. Um, and then last year, obviously, blowing a 3-1 lead. Yeah, Yesterday, yeah. by the way, was 328, or according to the sports Twitter, was, you know, blowing a giant lead day. <laughs> because of the, the Patriots, I thought it was really funny, or at least that was Wednesday. Uh, but in this case, here's LeBron's playoff seedings. Um, actually, he's been a two seed more than he's been a one seed over the last six, seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, and in some of those cases, he's won. In other cases, he's lost. Uh, I mean, you guys should know the history of LeBron in the finals at this point. Uh, the, Dirk, the, the magical Dirk and Jason Terry run in 2011. Uh, Kevin Durant stops LeBron in game one, and then LeBron actually just turns on a whole new engine for games two three, five, through five in the 2012 finals. Uh, Ray Allen shot in 2013, also known as LeBron's triple-double. <laughs> 2014, uh, that should not say 4-3. That should say 4-1. Um, so uh, but, but, but Jason, he only, he's only won once well, being a two seed. So compared to the, the twice that he's won as a one seed, it's, it's, it's his destiny is going to fail this year. I understand your worry, Francis. How is it's he going to fulfill his destiny? Um, he doesn't seem to worry when watching the press conferences. He's like, we're not playing fast enough. You know, we need to play. It's like very standard player answers. Um, now, as for the playoffs itself, I don't think necessarily anybody is very safe mm -hmm. in the top four in the West and the top four in the East. Uh, I think that the Cavs and Warriors will still come out as the guys playing in the finals. I think that's pretty much what we're spearheaded towards. I just think it's going to be some six or seven game series. There could be a moment or two where we're looking going, okay, maybe the Spurs? Yeah. Hmm? You, well, I, I, I'm going to be interested to see the Spurs. The, the difference is usually I think that if you're a team and you come into the playoffs, you don't want to be hitting the ground running straight away. You want to be slowly but surely making your way to the peak of your performance so that you're hitting yes. uh, maybe the Eastern Conference Thunder Finals and going in. Did it last year. Yeah, the Thunder, they still blew through on lead, but the, still. The Thunder did it last year, but also like, we have to rem remind ourselves that the Cavs did do it that way. They didn't drop a game until they played Toronto. That's so they, they just breezed their way through it and then they carried that on to the final. So there is an example where a team is just literally too good that they're able to sustain uh, that level of consistency. But I don't think, I've always had this approach, I don't think it's a problem if you're finding your feeting along the way so that when it comes to uh, the bigger games that when you click, you know, and you take that confidence and that momentum and push it forward. So. Uh, yeah, I don't think that this is going to be as an easy run to the finals this year mm -hmm. for the Cavs. I think that's a point that most people will echo. Um, I, I'm happy for the Celtics. This is a team that we have preached for the last two years that are building towards yeah, they this. Have, they, and, and it's a good morale boost. They have a lot to prove, though. Yeah, There's I agree. Nothing short of the Eastern Conference Finals. is. The, and by the way, I don't think that even just the Eastern Conference Finals is going to make Celtics fans necessarily that happy. I think they want to beat LeBron. I think everybody wants to beat LeBron, obviously, uh, and get to the finals. But like last year, success was determined for the Raptors by can they make the ECF. Yeah. This year, it's the same for the Celtics. So if they do have that tough matchup in the second round against... Um, uh, if they're the one seed, they play the Raptors, and if they're the two seed, they play the Wizards. It's not easy. Like yeah. there's no, <laughs> there's no, there's no easy road to the finals. It never has been necessarily. You play who's in front of you. But Francis, you said speaking of feeding and footing, I know someone with two feet and scores a lot of goals. 